Hi, I'm Angela. This is a cup of C for Monday, June 20th, 2011. Happy Monday. I am going to make it through this time <laughs> perfectly. I have gone through this like 20 times, not the whole thing, but in the beginning I keep on getting tripped up. And so I finally said to my guides and creator, go ahead, just give me the right words. Make sure the right words come out in perfect sequence, in perfect order, with perfect meaning. Um, and I thought that was really funny to bring up here because what I'm talking about today is the power of thoughts and words. And I know I'm going to make it through this time. So I'm just going to jump right in. You see it all around us. We, we see it all around us now. Okay, you see um, creating your reality and manifesting and doing affirmations and all kinds of stuff for, you know, self-help and, and self-empowerment and all that kind of stuff. And it seems to be sort of the flavor of the week. But in reality, it's been around forever. Religions, belief systems have taught forever about the power of the thought, the power of the word, how words can be arrows, how um, there are some languages where they teach the consonants before they teach, they teach the consonants in writing, but they'll only teach the vowels verbally in teaching them the words, and the student needs to understand the power of the words as they learn to create them. Even the word abracadabra, which is the standard magical inc incantation that everybody's used. You see ma magicians and, and um, spells and everything. Even Bugs Bunny uses it. Um, it's from the ancient Aramaic language, and it translates to mean, I create as I speak. So think about that. I create as I speak. A word that is supposed to be, to represent the power that we have in ourselves is as simple as saying, I create as I speak. There alone lies the power of the word. We have so trained ourselves um, to believe that the power is outside of us and we're t taking that power back. But if you look all around us in society right now, you see it all over. You're not, you're not good enough. You're not wealthy enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not handsome enough, you're not smart enough, you're not um, attractive enough. It's just so many different things that you're not. And what happens with that is the more you get pounded and pounded and pounded and pounded, and you accept it as reality, if you accept that as true, then it becomes part of your reality because then you believe it. Once you believe it, then your thinking is created from those beliefs, and then your words come from those thoughts. So see how that sort of self-perpetuates. So we're at this point in our history and, and in our evolution where we are taking back our power. We are going back to our inner divinity. We are remembering our oneness and our self-empowerment, our complete self-empowerment. And in the process of doing that, we have to release all of the other junk that basically has been fed to us because we have wanted to go through this experience of separation. Theory is that originally we were telepathically connected and didn't have to speak because we could read each other's thoughts and it was okay because we were all pure and honest and everything came from love. Well, then we wanted to experience that separation thing, so we separated out and how to create words to communicate and sounds. So what is that? Well, then you have to take the thought, you have to translate it into something that represents that thought when it comes out of your mouth. So that, of course, becomes a much more focused energy because you're focusing that thought into a symbol or a representation to send out that energy through your mouth so others can understand it. <clears throat> That's very powerful. And what what happens is when you have those ingrained beliefs in you that I was talking about, all the negativity of you're not this, you're not that, you're not that, um, then what happens is your thoughts become filtered as they come through to your words by those beliefs and feelings that, that come from those beliefs. So the more we clear that out and the more we notice it before it comes out, the better and more clear we become, the more powerful, the more powerful and the more we can instantly create exactly what we want. So I always find that funny because people get all a little panicked 
when I start talking to them about that, when they start working in, all, in this area. And I say how powerful, how the more you clear, the more powerful your thoughts and words become, and they really instantaneously can manifest very quickly. I've had many experiences in that, that respect. And you know that quote about how it's not that we're afraid that we're not powerful, but that we're actually afraid of how powerful we are. Well, there's a perfect example of it because I hear that all the time. It's like, oh, wow, but you know, what, eh, what if I think of this and what if that? But here's the thing. As we, what did I say, that filter, that filter we use between our thoughts, you know, from our thoughts to create our thoughts and then translate them into words even more. If we pull out those filters, if we stop believing, if we clear those beliefs that are self-limiting <clears throat> and we and we stop believing the I'm not or it's impossible for me to or I can't, then you, the more you pull that out, the less you have to worry about what you're thinking and saying because those things get cleared and pulled away. Now, I'm not saying that it all goes away and it, or that it all goes away overnight. It's a continuous process. I am continually clearing and clearing and clearing. Yes, I've done a lot, a lot of clearing work and I've spent years doing this. But there are days when, there are times when one of those thoughts come up. But what happens is like what I tell people is the equivalent of when you have a clean counter versus when you have a dirty counter. So if you have like a clutter, dirty counter in your kitchen or whatever and something spills or something gets knocked over, a lot of times you're just like, I'll get it in a minute or I'll get to it in a second. And then sometimes it's like, well, if there's something in it, like uh, if there's like a glass that spills over and it gets cooked on other stuff and you're going, oh God, now I'm going to clean this up and now this is dirty and this and this and this and this got soaked with it. Well, that's sort of a lot of inner intermingling and it's hard to sometimes pull out the actual thing that contaminated everything to begin with. If you clear off, as you clear off the counter though, if you declutter and you pull out stuff off and then something spills, well then you can pick it up like that and you can clean it up. Same thing happens with you clearing yourself inside. Clearing your thoughts and clearing your emotions and getting rid of those self-limiting thoughts and behaviors because then what happens is you recognize it right away. If you have that thought and you say, oh wait, where'd that come from? Because that's what I tend to do. There are occasions when I'll still have that. And it'll come up and as I'm changing it, because it's a habit now for me to actually change it to the positive, I do then step aside and say, hmm, what's the belief, the self-limiting belief that's causing that thought to start to form? And that, I can pull it out right away, and it's easy to distinguish, and I can ask my higher self, I can ask creator, I can ask my guides, what is, what is it that I have to clear here that caused this? So um, then it becomes easier and easier and easier, and so then you can catch it almost before it becomes a thought. So there are so many different elements to this, but then the, the one thing I want you to focus on between now and Thursday is listen to yourself, and a lot of times that's, the, the hardest part is getting started on that because I don't think a lot of times we do listen to ourselves. A lot of times we just let that filter go, we let it go, we let it go, it comes out. And it's funny because the more you start noticing about yourself, the more you'll start noticing it in others around you. But you can even do it like a most a lot of people, if you have a cell phone, you can use um, a lot of cell phones now have the audio record on it. You can actually record yourself, just listen to yourself, have a conversation. Not for use any other way, but just to listen back to your side of the conversation and how many times you said, well, I can't do that, or I'm just not that lucky, or I'm just not that, you know, I'm not, not whatever, or I wish I could, um, with the implication when you say I wish I could, meaning that you ha have the belief that you can't, uh, and, and anything like that that has a negative energy that comes from it. And, and start to notice that, and if you listen to it, and you can say, then you should write down, this is how I should change this, this is how I can change, this is how I can change this. And then start listening to yourself as you speak, and before, just slow down, and before you speak, change the approach to the words that you're using to communicate the thought, and then change the thought in the process. So instead of, I can't do that, you can say, well, there are some other ways that would po that I could possibly do that better, or I can do this in this fashion. Um, then you start doing that, and it becomes more of a habit. 
And once it becomes a habit, then you have to learn, like I said, less and less about it. So on one hand, you're practicing it consciously to change that thought. And on the other hand, you're practicing to clear yourself and get rid of that stuff. So as, again, then if you work on both sides, as you get more and more and more clear, then, and, and your words and thoughts become so much more powerful, then you don't have to worry about that anymore because it has now become a habit. So I'm going to go. Wow, I'm already at ten and a half minutes. So I did make it through. And so have a great week. I want you to practice and listen to yourself thinking and talking. And I will see you Thursday on a cup of tea.